Welcome to a cult of personality, esoteric podcast extraordinaire. I'm your host, Greg Kaminsky, and you can find a cult of personality podcast at a cult of personality.net and on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and all the best podcast apps. This episode features an interview with Evo Dominguez Jr., author of Practical Astrology for Witches and Pagans, using the planets and stars for effective spell work, rituals, and magical work. I'd like to remind you that although you're able to listen to this podcast at no charge, the costs for me to bring it to you are significant. In order to ensure that the free Occult of Personality podcast continues, I need your financial support. If you're willing, consider supporting Occult of Personality by joining the membership section or donating via the donate button on the occultofpersonality.net website or via Patreon at patreon.com slash occult of personality. If you find these interviews interesting, informative, inspiring, and thought-provoking, please commit to helping me continue bringing you this podcast. And if you're already supporting the show or have done so in the past, my heartfelt thanks, and I salute you. A Cult of Personality podcast is also sponsored by Miskatonic Books, an online store that focuses on the esoteric, occult, ceremonial magic, Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, witchcraft, the Golden Dawn, as well as dark fantasy, classic horror, and supernatural fiction. They carry books by all your favorite esoteric publishers as well. Just visit MiskatonicBooks.com. Temple of Thelema is a true outer order of the greater mysteries, providing ceremonial initiation, structured training, and regular group work, all in conformity with the principles of the Book of the Law. An investment of time and Effort and commitment is expected from each member. Each is expected to aspire fervently to the great work, to dare with courage undaunted, to perfect that work, and ever to apply his or her best effort to effect harmony within the order and within the world in general. Founded in service to the AA, College of Thelema seeks to guide the student to an understanding of the law of Thelema. Most especially, this means a deeper understanding of oneself and of one's true will. A combination of instruction techniques is employed, including seminars, written texts, and individual work. For over 40 years, College of Thelema has published journals in The Continuum and Black Pearl, as well as several books on occult subjects maintaining high standards in Thelemic education. Visit Temple of Thelema at www.thelema.org. Now, in episode number 168, our guest is Evo Dominguez Jr., author of Practical Astrology for Witches and Pagans. You can find his website at evodominguezjr.com. Evo Dominguez Jr. is a visionary and practitioner of a variety of esoteric disciplines. He has been active in Wicca and the pagan community since 1978 and has been teaching since 1982. Evo was a founding member of the First Coven of the Assembly of the Sacred Wheel, a Wiccan tradition where he currently serves as one of its elders. He is the author of Casting Sacred Space, the core of all magical work. Spirit Speak, Knowing and Understanding Spirit Guides, Ancestors, Ghosts, Angels, and the Divine, and Beneath the Skins. 
Evo is also a professional astrologer who has studied astrology since 1980 and been offering consultations and readings since 1988. Evo Dominguez Jr., I want to thank you very much for spending some of your time with us this evening on a Cult of Personality podcast. Thank you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this talk. Yeah, same here. Um, I want to thank you also for uh, your copy of your recent book, Practical Astrology for Witches and Pagans, Using the Planets and the Stars for Effective Spellwork Rituals and Magical Work, published by wiser books. Uh, this is really excellent, um, and we're going to be talking about it in just a moment. But for people who may not know who you are and be familiar with your work, could you give us a little bit of your background and bio? Sure. Um, I've actually been, uh, I guess, a lifelong um, psychic and mystic of sorts, I was the kid that uh, my family began to worry about early on because I would have dreams that were often uh, indicative of something about to happen, um, knowing that my grandfather was going to die while we were visiting him. So I went through a whole period of religious and spiritual exploration. Um, ostensibly, I was raised Roman Catholic, um, though I went through so many changes that my parents pretty much gave up on trying to instill any particular path on me. I was really fortunate. My father was a professor um, at a couple of different universities, but when I came in contact with the uh, esotericism and occultism, it was actually when he was when we moved to Delaware and he became a professor at the University of Delaware. And uh, there I was, uh, you know, uh, 13, 15, 16, reading uh, The Secret Lore of Magic by Idris Shah and plowing through um, all manner of things about hermetics and the Golden Dawn and whatnot because as a child of a professor, I had a library card to the university's library and could request things. And I thought I was actually going to end up somewhere in the Western magical tradition based on my initial leanings. And in the uh, late 70s, I actually, um, by a series of uh, fortunate coincidences, came into contact with... Uh, members of a uh, coven, of a Wiccan coven, and found that even though I had a great love for the West Western mysteries, I liked the community that uh, was part of Wicca and witchcraft that I came in contact with. I'd, sa I'd say that um, if I had to name people that have a great influence on me, obviously uh, Dion Fortune, uh, Alistair Crowley, though in, in teachers in life, I would say uh, Dolores Ashcroft Nowicki of Servants of the Light, Shakma Windrum, who's not as well known, but uh, had a ceremonial lodge and also uh, uh, was a voodoo practitioner out of uh, the Philadelphia area, had a great impact on me. The first teacher of astrology I had was a lovely woman named Ellen Reardon, who was remarkably bohemian and probably would have... Uh, been in perfectly good company in the uh, late 1800s, more so than the time that she lived in. And over the years, uh, I and others uh, came to create something called the Assembly of the Sacred Wheel, which is a Wiccan syncretic tradition that draws heavily on astrology, Kabbalah, the Western mysteries, as much as it does on the folk traditions of, of Europe. And at this point, we are about 14 covens strong. We've been in existence um, since uh, 1984. So as far as magical groups goes, that's a pretty long run so far. But one of the things that's true for me as well as, as the people that uh, I work with is that we're really cross-trained in a wide range of things. Our, our first coven had people that had uh, training in the Golden Dawn in lodge in uh, ceremonial magic in Gardnerian and Alexandrian Wicca, we had a member of the uh, Sabian Society. We had somebody who was tr training with a uh, sun bear in uh, Native American patterns. So, what we are, we call Wiccan because of the communal nature and the holidays we celebrate. But we often find ourselves uh, working just as frequently with people that are more in line with uh, Hermeticism or Western mysteries. And in addition to uh, the book you just mentioned, uh, I've written a book called 
um, spirit speak, which is uh, knowing and understanding spirit guides, ancestors, ghost angels, and the divine, a book called Casting Sacred Space, The Core of All Magical Work, another book called Beneath the Skins, which is actually an exploration of alternative sexualities, and I've got three manuscripts that are in process right now. I have been working as an astrologer um, since uh, 1988. I've also uh, been executive director for an AIDS HIV service organization. I've been a translator. I'm fluent in Spanish. I'm involved in a lot of uh, activism for a variety of causes as well, but it isn't my life. Very active in singing. I've uh, written over 80 chants and maintain an online uh, chant resource that's about to be refurbished. And as, as we'll speak later in the call, um, also one of the uh, um, original um, nudges and pushers and pu- and dreamers that uh, brought the uh, new Alexandrian Library project into being. And we'll, we'll talk more, more about that at length. I don't know. Is that a good start for you? I think that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, very comprehensive. And you've uh, got quite an interesting background, I think. Um, we'll, we'll get into more sure. things as we go on. But um, I want to start by focusing on your recent book, Practical Astrology for Witches and Pagans. Um, again, um, a really excellent book. I, I think this is a great place for people like me who are not very familiar with astrology aside from knowing the you know astrological signs and planets and how mm-hmm. that sort of fits together. Um, but you know, going through your book, this is really phenomenal. Maybe you could talk a little bit in, about your motivation behind writing it. Well, part of it is that I have uh, been teaching astrology for many, many years. And inevitably, uh, I found that uh, people would uh, hit the wall when I would, you know, hand out a list of books to read if they wanted to learn more about astrology. Let's say that I've uh, taught more astrology 101s and 102s and 201s than than I care to think of. And in the many years of teaching astrology, the only time that I felt like it worked to the degree that I wanted to was because there was a, a lodge, um, ceremonial lodge, that said, we want to learn astrology. It's so interwoven in the work we do in, in our rituals and in herbalism and in alchemy, and we'd like to know more, but it just slips through our fingers whenever we do it. And they agreed because they had a very charismatic leader, and there's good and bad to that to have me come up to their place and do 12 weekends. And after 12 weekends, um, they felt that they had somewhat of a grounding in astrology. I can't do that very often. And I can't do that with too many uh, people if I, if I intend to do anything else with my life. And I had so many friends saying, you really should write this, you really should write this, because most books on astrology um, fail because of two little things. One, there's almost an unwritten message that if you are reading this book, it is because it is your intention to become an astrologer. I'm not even going to talk about the ones that are mostly fluff to entertain people or to um, do the astrological equivalent of uh, helping them take a selfie of themselves with their chart. Um, So... Astrologers are very focused on jargon, and they're very focused on creating other professional astrologers rather than uh, conveying the gist of something. The comparison I always give is that how many people would end up learning any amount of math? And we all need a certain amount of math in this life, but most of us don't desire to be uh, theoretical mathematicians or um, to uh, delve into uh, all manner of arcane uh, formulas. So the first thing I decided was I need to write a book that conveys astrology in images and ideas and in words with only as much math as is absolutely necessary. Also, to have a focus on viewing astrology from the perspective of where I think it started as something that was completely integrated with um, spiritual, religious, and magical practice rather than being a separate discipline that is used um, for at least in modern times, for very specific things, predictive work and perhaps um, some soul-searching. Because 